Good morning. So I want to tell, take you back 300 years ago. A British man named John Lawson, he came to Charleston, South Carolina, and started his expedition north to north, today's North Carolina. And along his way, he was the first one to describe local flora and the fauna of the region for the first time. And later, he published his uh, observations in a book, this one, back in his home, and it became very popular. So in the book, he documented what he observed near Pamlico Sound today. The trouts of the salt water are so tender that if a sudden frost come, they're benumbed and float on the surface of the water. Well, we know what John Austin was uh, looking at was most likely a speckled trout or Cenotian nebulosus. It's a uh, medium-sized fish, most distinct distinguishable by uh, the black rounded dots on the back of its body and its uh, dorsal fins and its caudal fins. And it's a commercial and recreation, especially recreationally very popular fish in the US. And if you have caught a speckled trout on the other end of your line, then you, you know what I was talking about. It's just so much fun and it's a delicacy on the table. So what John Lawson didn't know back then was he was at the northern range limit of speckled trout. This fish has a wide distribution in the US from Gulf Coast all the way to Virginia. And in Virginia and North Carolina, they faced the most severe winters. And uh, it's not surprising that the fish here, they, uh, John Lawson observed the massive mortality events. And in fact, even at this day, in some years, we can still observe these events um, in some years. So the picture to the left is showing all the locations that has been reported for at least one cold stun in the past decades. However, the populations in the northern part seems to be resilient, and the populations usually rebound in about two to three years. So why does this all matter? Fish have uh, limited strategies to deal with cold. They can't just put on a sweater like we do. So, and um, when, when we think about climate change, people tend to think about rising temperature and a warming ocean. What we think less about is there will be still extreme events like the winter extremely cold from time to time. And what I'm interested in is by studying populations in Virginia and North Carolina that has been routinely experiencing these extreme events and understanding their genetic makeups, we might have a better understand, understanding of their resilience going into a more unpredictable future. So a couple of years ago, I was able to convince Sea Grant to fund me through a graduate research fellow to study the genetics of speckled trout. And thinking about all the speckled trout today, they are the survivors, they're the offsprings of the survivors from the past, and the secrets to resilience might just be in their DNA. And I like to think myself of unlocking the secret of resilience from the, studying this DNA. So one of the hard challenging part of this project is there's just so much fishing involved. <laughs> okay, I, you know I'm kidding. Um, so this project is truly impossible without the help of a large group of fishermen who generously donated the time and the resources to help me collect samples. I want to especially recognize the man on the top left, Sheldon, he's my outreach mentor, and he's been fishing for speckled trout in this area for more than 40 years. He generously taken me on his personal boat and we've been fishing for many hours and caught hundreds of speckled trout together. And it was truly an amazing experience. Uh, I'm learning all the biology about this fish I would never otherwise end the, on the textbook. So how do we do this? Some of you in this room might have used um, these tubes. You spit into it and um, companies such as 23andMe and Ancestry can sequence extract DNA from these, your spit, essentially, and look, your, look at your genetic history. So in a similar fashion, we collect a small piece of fin clip from the fish that we collect, because fish wouldn't spit for us. <laughs> so, uh, and we sequence their DNA in much of the similar way. So in the past couple of years, I've collected hundreds of samples ranging from Virginia all the way through Gulf of Mexico. 
And by comparing fish that are potentially cold adapted, such as in Virginia and North Carolina, to fish that are more warm adapted in the more southern regions, I've identified dozens of genetic markers that might indicate the resilience of our fish in Virginia. And these are the good targets for more targeted studies in the future to better understand and might even fish resilience in general. So just like John Lawson wrote his story about uh, speckled trout 300 some years ago, I hope my, st my study can help to ensure a little bit the long-term sustainability of this resource and let future generations to write their stories uh, in the many years to come. Thank you very much.